Today we are learning about applied maximum and minimum problems. These are problems where we are trying to find the biggest or smallest value that will satisfy a given set of conditions. Um, for example, problem one, we are to determine the maximum product of two positive numbers whose sum is eight. This is a relatively easy problem. Um, the first thing we need to do is find a formula for the quantity to be maximized. So what are we maximizing? The product. We are maximizing the product. So we need a formula for the product in terms of two variables. Um, so that would be x times y equals p, where these are the two, x and y are the two positive numbers and p is the product. But this is in terms of three variables, so we need to um, get it in terms of only two. Since it says the two positive numbers have a sum of eight, we can also write x plus y equals eight. Now we can isolate either the x or the y, it doesn't matter which one. Uh, generally we isolate y, so I'll say y equals eight minus x. We could have just as easily isolated the x though. And um, we're going to substitute that in to the original equation in place of the y. So x times 8 minus x equals p. This probably feels a little bit like what you used to do in Algebra 1, solving systems of linear equations. Um, so the next thing that I want to do uh, is think about the interval of possible answers that I could have here. My numbers are going to sum to 8, so that would be from 0 to 8 would be possible answers. That means if I get a number outside of that range, um, since they are positive, they have to be from 0 to 8, I would throw them out, any extra extraneous solutions. So then uh, we find the maximum or the minimum by setting the derivative equal to 0. Now. Uh, before I find the derivative, I'd rather not use the product rule if I could avoid it, so I'm going to go ahead and distribute that x. 8x minus x squared equals p. And now I'm going to find the derivative. So the derivative of 8x is 8, and the derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x, and that would be equal to dp dx, the derivative of p with respect to x. So now I'm just solving, uh, setting this derivative equal to 0 and solving for x. So 8 minus 2x equals 0. That means 8 equals 2x divided by 2 on both sides, and 4 is equal to x. So now I have x, um, but I'm going to also need y to determine that maximum product. So I'm going to substitute that back into my uh, original equation. I could use either, oh no, I need to use um, the one with just x and y in it, this equation. So y equals 8 minus, I now know that x is 4, so y also equals 4. And uh, the problem doesn't ask us just to find the two positive numbers, it asks us to determine what is that maximum product. So x times y equals the maximum product, so 4 times 4 would equal our product, which is 16, which is the answer to the problem. Always make sure that you are answering the question asked. This pro problem could have just as easily asked us to find those po two positive numbers. Um, you have to be sure that you've told them what they are asking to find out. All right. Uh, next one, we're skipping number two because it's also really easy. Number three, you want to enclose 10,000 square feet of prime riverfront property by fencing off a rectangular area that is bordered by a river. Building perpendicular to the river costs $8 per linear foot and building parallel to the river costs five dollars per linear foot. What are the dimensions that will minimize the cost? So what are we trying to minimize here? Cost. We're going to need a cost equation. First, let's start by drawing a picture. Um, 
A lot of these problems are going to be more visual. You need a picture to get them set up. I have um, a rectangular area bordered by a river. So here's my river and then the rectangular area that goes up to it. Um, and so this would be like my length and these would be like the widths. And what information do they give me other than this? It costs eight dollars per linear foot on the width, which are the ones that are perpendicular to the river, and five dollars per linear foot on the length parallel to the river. I also know the area is 10,000 square feet, so width times length equals 10,000. Now I really do need a cost equation. The cost of this project will be um, $8 times W, which would be the width, but there's two W's, so I also need to multiply that times two, plus five dollars times the length. So this means that the cost would equal 16 W plus five, oops, L. Um, now I need this in terms of only two variables. So I'm going to come back up here to this equation and I'm going to isolate L, so L would equal 10,000 divided by W, and I can substitute that in for the L here. So now I've got cost equals 16W plus, um, let's see, let's call this 5 times 10,000 W to the negative 1 power because I like powers better when I'm doing derivatives. And now I'm going to go ahead and multiply the 5 times the 10,000 so that my cost equation will be 16 W plus 50,000 W to the negative 1. Okay. Now I'm ready to take the derivative. The derivative of the cost with respect to W is equal to 16 minus 50,000 W to the negative 2 power. And now, oops, you can't see my negative. Um, set this equal to 0 and solve for W. I think I'm going to do that on the next screen. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so my derivative equals 0, 16 minus 50,000 times w to the negative 2. Um, I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides, so that'll be negative 16 equals, and I'm going to rewrite this as negative 50,000 over w squared, so that uh, is a positive um, exponent. Now I'm going to multiply by w squared on both sides, so I'll have negative 16 w squared equals negative 50,000 and divide by negative 16 on both sides. So I have w squared equals 3,125. Take the square root on both sides. And I would only want a positive square root here, not a negative, because I'm talking about the length of a piece of property. So you could uh, simplify this radical, 625 times 5 is equal to 3,125, so w would equal 25 square roots of 5 
feet. Um, and chances are you might have a calculator on a problem like this and could give a decimal approximation to three decimal places as well. Um, now we need to know the length. The length was equal to 10,000 divided by W. So if I take 10,000 divided by 25 square roots of 5, I get 400 over the square root of 5, and rationalizing that, I get 400 divided by 5 is 80 square roots of 5 feet. What did it ask me for? The dimensions that would minimize the cost. And so the dimensions would be the length and the width. Okay, moving on to number five. Find the point on the parabola y squared equals 2x that is closest to the point 1, 4. Optimizing the radicand will optimize the radical. Okay, so what are we trying to optimize, which means maximize or minimize? We want a point closest to this point. That means we want the minimum distance. And hopefully you remember your distance formula from long ago. The square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, now we know we want this point involved. Um, I'm going to call that x1, y1. So the distance will be equal to x2 minus 1 squared plus y2 minus 4 squared. Now the only problem here is I've still got three variables, d, x2 and y2. So this equation right here, I can get either x or y by itself. Since the y is squared, it's probably easier to isolate x here. Because to isolate x, all I have to do is divide by 2 or multiply times 1 half on both sides. So, I'm going to take out my x2 and replace it with 1 half y squared. Minus 1 squared. And this is going to be the same y now as the y that I have um, here. So I'm going to stop using y2 and just call it y, because this will be the y-coordinate of the point I'm trying to find. Um, so, uh, this is an interesting problem to take the derivative of. This is a mega chain rule problem. This is where the hint comes into play. Optimizing the radicand will optimize the radical. That means that if I make the number under the root, as large or as small as possible, the root itself will be as large or as small as possible. Um, that hint that they're giving you there helps you to make this into an easier problem. It says, you know what, let's just ignore the root and work with the radicand, the number underneath the root, um, when we take our derivative. That's going to simplify this problem. Now, could you do the double chain rule here and uh, calculate the derivative out that way and work it that way? Yes, and you'll get the exact same answer. But they're just giving us permission to make this into an easier problem, and solving an easier problem is a good problem-solving strategy. So, the derivative of d with respect to y, in total ignoring the root, is going to be 
Um, first, I'm going to take the derivative of this portion right here um, to copy the inside function using the chain rule here, multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which would just be y, plus 2 times copy the inside function, multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Now, I'm just going to simplify this. I'm going to distribute the 2y, 2 and y, into this parentheses. So that's going to be y cubed minus 2y, plus distribute here, 2y minus 8. So these add to 0. And now I'm going to set my derivative equal to 0. 0 equals y cubed minus 8. So I add 8 to both sides. 8 equals y cubed. Take the cube root on both sides. 2 equals y. And now that I know what y is, I need to find x because the problem is asking me to find the point. So I need just x and y. So if 1 half y, which is 2, squared equals x, that means 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 equals x. So the point would be listed as a coordinate, 2 comma 2. And that's the answer. Okay. Number seven, a rectangular box with a top is twice as long as it is wide and has a volume of 72 cubic feet. Find the dimensions of the box requiring the least amount of material. Okay, what is it that we are minimizing to find the least of? The amount of material that makes a box would be its surface area. So we're minimizing the surface area. All right, um, I'm going to start by drawing a little picture. Something like that. All right, it's twice as long as, as, as it is wide. So if this is the width, the length here is 2w. That takes one of the variables out of the problem here. Um, but there's still a height, and they don't tell us anything about the height, so we're going to just call that h. Now, we do have some information about the volume that's given. So the volume of a rectangular box would be length times width times height. So here it would be 2w times w times h. And they tell us that it is 70, oops, 72. So this is 2w squared h. So um, I may want to go ahead and isolate the h here so that I can have a surface area equation in terms of only w's. 72 divided by 2 is 36, so 36 over w squared would equal h, or 36w to the negative 2 power. Okay? Now, how do you find the surface area of a rectangular prism? Well, basically you just find the areas of each of the surfaces. So, the... Um, surface area formula you may or may not remember from geometry, but basically to find the surface area of a prism you just sum the areas of each of the sides. So on a rectangle, a rectangular prism there's four, uh, six surfaces. Top, bottom, left, right, front, back. So let's look at the right side, left side. The right side, left side areas would be W times H, and then there are two of those. Plus top bottom would be 2w times w and then there are two of those and um, let's see front back would be 2w h and then there's two of those now 
Um, we need this in terms of only two variables, surface area, and we'll do the width. So we need to eliminate the H's. And the way we're going to eliminate the H's is by using the, this expression down here at the bottom. So we'll have 2W times 36W to the negative 2 plus 4 w squared plus 4w times 36w to the negative 2. Now we're going to simplify this before we take the derivative. So this would be 72w to the negative 1 plus 4w squared plus 144w to the negative 1. Since these are both w to the negative ones, we can combine those like terms to get 4w squared plus 216w to the negative 1. Now we're going to take ds dw, the derivative of the surface area with respect to the width, which would be 8w minus 216w to the negative 2. Set that equal to 0. And we're going to solve for w. So um, I'm going to add the 216w to the negative 2 to both sides. But I'm going to go ahead and write it as 216 over w squared equals 8w. And if I multiply by w squared on both sides, I get 216 equals 8w cubed. Divide by 8 on both sides, 27 equals w cubed. Take the cube root on both sides, 3 equals w. Now what did this problem ask me to find? Find the dimensions of the box requiring the least amount of material. So all I have right now is the width. Um, that's one dimension. Remember that the length was equal to twice the width. So the length would be equal to 2 times 3, which is 6. What are the units here? Feet. 6 feet here, 3 feet here. And the height is 70, no, what is the height? 36 over w squared, which would be 9. 36 divided by 9 is 4 feet. So 3 feet for the width, 6 feet for the length, and 4 feet for the height are the dimensions that would require the least amount of material. Um, so we did problems 1, 3, 5, and 7 from your notes. So there are three remaining, 2, 4, and 6. So you may want to pause the video, try those three on your own. They are different from the ones that we've done. And you'll find in um, this particular assignment that most of the problems are different um, from each other. So they do require a certain amount of concentration, um, and also some of your math skills that you've learned from previous math courses. But give those three a try, and I'm going to uh, have the answers here on this video. Good luck with your applied maximum and minimum problems. Okay, here's number two for you to look over. On this one, we were finding the dimensions of the lot with the largest area, so we were maximizing the area. And we had to get that equation in terms of just two variables. Take a look at that one. And here's the answer to number four. On this one, we were minimizing the amount of aluminum, which is the surface area. So we were minimizing the surface area equation. And again, we had to get that surface area equation in terms of only two variables, surface area and the radius was the easier way to do this one. So take a look over that one. Hopefully you got that one right. And last, number six, 
This one was finding the area of the largest rectangle that could be inscribed in a semicircle of radius 10. So we were ma maximizing the area, and we uh, had to get that in terms of only two variables. I used the x-coordinate system, and what's critical on this one is remembering, first of all, that the formula for area of a, uh, not area of a rectangle is length times width, that's easy. Um, that the formula for a circle on the coordinate plane is x squared plus y squared equals r squared if you uh, make the center of the circle at the origin, which is the easiest way to set this problem up. So this one might require a little bit more concentration and thinking. There will be a variety of homework problems for you to try, but I think um, in most cases there's been one pretty close to it in the uh, notes for you to reference. Um, as you're working. Good luck on your surface area homework. I mean, applied maximum and minimum problem homework.